I would say it's Metal Monday, but it's really Tuesday. You know, because it, <laughs> the three day weekend will mess you up. Everybody's like, it's Monday, but it's not. How are you, buddy? I'm great. Great to see you, man. Great to talk to you. <laughs> I mean, we have the funniest fucking story. <laughs> we it, it's and it can finally be unleashed and I released. Know. <laughs> I know it's so crazy. So um I'm gonna give the setup. So yeah, yeah. I'm out on tour with Bill Burr, and he decides to do a live podcast at the Troubadour. He loves the Troubadour. And he constantly does shows there on the down low to help support it because after COVID, they're wiped out. And oh, yeah. so after sound check, I'm out front and here comes this guy jogging down Santa Monica <laughs> Boulevard. And I'm looking and I go, what the fuck is that, Mark? <laughs> and 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 I've known you 35 years and you were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go, hey, what are you doing? And you're like, oh, uh, uh. and you, you're kind of being weird. <laughs> And I go, uh, and you go, I, um, I'm doing press. And I go, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I go, press. Okay. Well, do you want to come into the show, man? It's going to be in about an hour. And you go, I, 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 I got to let you know. Can I, I got to go to the hotel and I'll let you know. And then you text me and you go, I can do it. <clears throat> and so I slide you in. And then like seven, eight months later, you text me out of the middle of the night or whatever, and you're like, hey, man, I can finally tell you. I give your side. Yeah, yeah. So when it comes down to it, I was down in uh, Hollywood, staying there, and I was supposed to, no one knew I was there. No one knew I was there. And I was recording, I guess we could say it now, I was recording the, the Kerry King record from Hell I Rise. And it was, you know, of course, I had to, you know, sign NDAs up the up the ass. I wasn't supposed to be down there. And um, even the, the the Death Angel guys thought I was in Florida with my girl. And it was just, you know, I, I was doing all these, telling everyone all these different stories. And so I thought it was a no-brainer. You know, I was just walking, you know, walking, jogging down San, Santa Monica. And I saw you. It's like, oh, damn. And then, <laughs> that's why you hit me. You know, what are you doing out here? I go, oh, Yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm doing press. I'm doing press for the Creator Death Angel tour. I'm like, what the fuck? I couldn't You're believe. Like, All right, yeah, man. And I just, and I kind of walked away, and I did feel weird. And when you asked me to come in, I was like, yeah. And then even when we were talking after that, I just felt odd because I had this thing looming over me that that I lied to you, you know. And we're sitting there watching Bill Burr, and he was hilarious. And then after, you know, usually I'm much more social with you, but I didn't want to fucking slip in any way, shape, or form. So I just kind of, you know laid low and just kind of all right man i gotta do gotta, gotta do my interviews now <laughs> and yeah. then i left and then when it finally got announced and it was like seven eight months maybe over even a year when yeah. it finally got announced who the lineup was then i texted you i was like hey bro remember when i was acting all crazy and weird because <laughs> usually obviously i'd see you and i'd be yammering the whole time about everything and uh yeah i was like that's why i was down there recording i was down there recording the record so now that's out me and you could talk about everything <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I understand them. And NDAs are like, people don't understand. They're like, dude, I was like your bro. And you didn't even tell me, but like, I was pulled in to hear the ACDC record. Um, you know, the last one that came out and I had yeah. to sign an NDA. And so for a year straight, people are like, you know, on the radio, like ACDC is done. And inside I'm like, Oh God, I just want to, <laughs> I just want to call radio stations like you're so wrong, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I had to sit on it, man. It's fucking weird. So, it is odd. It's like cancerous almost. Well, I mean, knock on wood. I don't want to say that, but you know, it's it's a lot. It's a lot to hold, and I had to hold that in for better part of a year for sure. At least once the record was out. But prior to the record being out, just when I got the news, that's almost two years of just not telling anybody. It's crazy. That is crazy. Let's get into that a little bit because. Uh, First of all, I wanted to give you uh, huge props, fantastic vocals on this record. And to tell you the truth, I was super excited to hear it, mostly because of you, because it's amazing where you've come from, say, 80, you know, five, six, seven, <laughs> to where you are now vocally. I've yeah. sang most of my life. And with you, which is very rare, you have gotten millions of times better and stronger and super unique 
So uh, hats off to you, man. Last time I talked to you, I said the same thing when you played the Troubadour. I had interviewed you, Death Angel. Was yeah, yeah. The Troub, and your vocals blew me away then. And then your uh, vocals blew me away when I saw you in the uh, wedding band at the Fillmore during the oh, yeah, Metallica yeah. 40. Yeah. And so uh, awesome. And I want to get into that in a minute. But let's I really start- appreciate that, though, by the way, for sure. Let's start. It, it's real, man. Um. <laughs> So at the beginning of this, of course, Carrie is thinking a, a, a minute, maybe Phil from Pantera. And then um, they say, hey, we're, we're doing this tour on the down low. And he's like, OK, that's out. Does he audition other people? And what is your audition like? Because I know he saw you sing some covers and he's like, holy shit. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, me and Carrie go way back for sure, you know, Um my 16th birthday, my 16th birthday was Slayer Death Angel at the Stone in San Francisco in 1985. Yes. You know? And at that time, we saw them. We didn't really communicate. I mean, shit, I was 16. You know, Dennis and Gus were, you know, maybe 17. Rob was 16 as well. And Andy was got 12, you know? Yeah. And so we're, Slayer was, you know, we got the show. We were thrilled, obviously, but very intimidated to talk to him. So we were just like, you know, goofy teenagers enamored by them and kind of scared of them. So we got like a couple photos with them and that was it. But, uh, you know, over the years, our paths crossed many times. We played the first time we played um, in New York, another one that was Slayer Overkill Death Angel at the Ritz, you know, so we, our paths have always crossed and whatnot. And then uh, it was just through latter years, kind of when Death Angel was coming back, the coming, when we, you know, Mach 2 and Mach 3, that uh, I would see Carrie a lot because I was hanging out with Kirk Hammond a lot, you know, and our paths would just kind of cross and then we'd be in these, you know, same kind of circles every now and then. And then just, you know, you get in circles and start talking. I, and I, I, could, I could yammer. And me and him just kind of built up this friendship over time. And um, then we did a tour with him. It was uh, Slayer Anthrax, Death Angel. I believe that was 2000. Gosh, was that 16 maybe? 2016 or 2000 yeah i think 2016 and that's when me and carrie really really hit it off on that tour you know every night i'd be in his room after the show on days off i'd go to dinner with him uh sometimes me him and frank bellow and it was just we really hit it off on that tour and then um you know i was doing my thing and then eventually you, you caught wind that slayer was gonna call it a day you know which what, what wasn't good news for me but you know, because uh, I, I love Slayer, you oh, know, God, and then same here. Right. And then uh, Carrie was always very forthright about him saying, I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm putting something together, you know, and I knew he was. And um, then fast forward, I just started hearing little, you know, whispers from people, you know, you hear stuff in the industry. And I believe it was one time I was at Nam. A few different people came up to me and just kind of mentioned it. They may have been drunk and, you know, loose lips. So, uh, and it was that, I think it was a NAM conference and like three different people over the weekend that had nothing to do with each other. Just kind of put in my ear that, you know, Carrie's putting together a band. I think you're one of the people, I think you're one of the people he's considering. And I was just kind of like, really? Huh. You know, you think he'd, you know, hit me up. But then, um, yeah. And then I finally started giving it a good thought. I was like, huh. I think I, I think I'd be good in that p- position. I think I could be really good in that position, you know? And I just remember, I really kept thinking about it. And it was, you know, I was kind of torn because, uh, you know, death. I have Death Angel. And that's my, you know, that's my baby. Of course. And um, yeah. And then finally, I just really, you know, I, t- I talked to a couple people, uh, you know, some heavy hitters in the industry and just said, look, you know, I've heard that I'm one of the people Carrie's considering. I know there's like, from what I heard, it was like three or four different people. And I just kind of mentioned, I go, if this were to ever even come to fruition, do you think I, do you think I should do it? You know, with, you know, with Death Angel going on and all this stuff and pretty much unanimous. And these guys were like, you know, big wigs in the industry, whether they're, you know, musicians and some people in management companies and whatnot. And across the board, everyone said, you'd be an idiot not to. Right. You'd be an idiot. So at that point, I just kind of said, you know what? I'm going to make it my mission. I'm going to make it my mission. And I, you know, me and Carrie always stay in touch throughout the years, just text or whatnot. And I go to New York a lot and he lives there. But prior to that, he was living in LA and I 
I'd just go see him when I was in those towns. We'd hang, have dinner or something. And uh, so I texted him this one day and I just, hey, man, you know, I know you're putting together, you know, a band. And uh, I'm just I would just want to let you know, I think the text was I'm throwing my I'm throwing my, uh, you know, my hat in the ring. And then I said, scratch that. I'm throwing my throat in the ring. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. And the text I got back from him was something like, I'd be lying if I said I hadn't considered it. And that was kind of how it went. And then he just started sending me demos, like demos. At first, it was just guitar. And then eventually it was demos with guitar and drums and then some, you know, some bass. And that was kind of it, just structures of songs. And I'd be listening to him every day on my walks. And then eventually he started sending stuff with sending me sheets of lyrics and then some stuff with guide vocals. And I would just start listening. He's like, you want to come down and like, have you been listening to stuff? I'm like, yeah, yeah. He's like, you know what? I'm like, I know it. He goes, you want to come down and demo some stuff? And so I said, yeah. And started, you know, I went down over the course of about a year. I went down maybe, you know, I, I don't know. I'm bad with numbers, but I think six to eight different times. And we'd re-demo these songs and just keep keep making them better. And uh, that was kind of how it went, you know. And we'd hang. I'd go down to Southern California for a couple of days. And we'd knock this out and then hang. And um, from what I know now, apparently no one... He didn't really have any auditions with anyone else. No one else really, you know, came down. So I know he had other people in mind. I know, you know, there was, of course, rumors all over the place about Phil Anselmo, you know. And Phil's a dear friend of mine as well. So it's just, you know, I was like, whoever gets it, whoever gets it, you know, right on. Like, I would understand why, you know, management or people at record company would, you know, go for that because that definitely puts, you know, asses in the seats for sure but uh um i know phil had the pantera thing going on and well phil has that he has down he has you know <laughs> yeah yeah right phil's got a, a pretty full plate but you know i just said i have death angel it's not just death angel but i have that but um i think once i set my mind to to do it you know i just put in my mind that when I texted him that day, my mindset was different. It wasn't like I could do this. My mindset was this gig's fucking mine. Yeah. This gig is mine. And then from that point on, it just, it went and it just kept growing. And my, me and him got closer and the songs kept getting better every time we demoed it. And then eventually I got the gig. <laughs> now, when you're demoing, obviously, are you kind of, you know, creating the new vocal character, quote unquote, because it's a, a darker uh, vocal and it's uh, a little more of kind of, you know, thrash vocals have changed over the period from the 80s to now. Uh, were you creating that on the demos? Was he going like, give it a little more of this? Or were you going, I want to establish a totally different identity vocal wise in Kerry King's band? Well, I definitely did. Good question. I just, um, you know, he would he would send me stuff with a guide vocal and Carrie's got a you know Carrie's got a cool voice he does you know and he he knows what he wants he definitely knows what he wants so what he kind of threw my way I just thought I'm going to make an, a more intense version of that you know he's got the anger for sure you know it, it's there and the phrasing and I was just like you know I'm going to do throw in my little nuances and whatnot and we got together when we do these demos me him and um, our friend Ron Sandoval it's his studio and he was kind of engineering him. And we would just go through these and work and, you know, me and him would just pick apart everything, everything. And sometimes he'd just kind of say, you know, more, you know, a little more intense here, maybe a little more angry here. Sometimes he'd even say, you know, that's a little too death angel-y, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it was good. We, we, we were doing this and I definitely knew I wanted to, you know, turbo drive it for sure. Right. And, um, but I did want to bring my own identity to it because obviously people who are, are going to listen to this, no matter what, it's always going to be a B, you know, a B it was Slayer, and it's always going to be that, no matter what. Of course. And and I, you know, as I said, I'm a huge Slayer fan. I I I love Tom's voice, man. You know, it's iconic. It's oh. iconic. So I go in there and I'm just like, I'm not trying to replicate Tom. I'm just, you know, trying to be myself, but come across more turbo driven, more more angry. And to get, you know, basically be uh, the translator for what Carrie hears in his head and translate that that anger and passion onto, onto you know, I still say tape, onto the tape. And, uh, but, you know, make it be me. And um, you know, people will find some similarities because a lot of the stuff on the Ladder Slayer records, Carrie did write 
the, the phrasing and and the lyrics. So there's a lot of that going on. But I definitely think I put my own stamp on it for sure. Now, there was an interesting question that uh, Carrie asked you, and I would uh, wonder that, too. I'm 58 now. How old are you? I'm 55. 55. Yeah, so, youngest guy in thrash, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. But um, I know at one point he said, "Are you? you think you're able to sustain this nightly? Because, uh, you know, it's it's an extreme vocal. And that would be the first thing I would ask myself, because a lot of times people would be like, oh, Dean, man, one day you should sing for ACDC. And I was like, hey, man, you don't even understand what that would take. Like, I mean, for it's sure. Severe, like one year of training, working oh. out vocal exercises being around 120 dB of vocals, it's a little easier with in-ear monitors now. But other than that, you're traveling. Carrie's not on a jet. It's Carrie King. It's not Slayer. It's a different type of touring. It's a grind. So it was a legit question. And uh, how did you know in your mind that, oh, I'll be able to do it? Or did you just say yes and I'll figure it out? <laughs> uh, kind of a marriage of the two. No, it was just... Uh... I figured because when we were doing vocals on the on the demo stuff, we'd be in there for hours, you know, yeah. and so I was knocking that out and I, I felt I would feel fine the next day, feel fine the next day. And I've been, you know, I've been I've taken voice lessons over the, the you know, the few last few decades with various different people and took what different styles and things that, you know, they taught me and some things they did. I, I, I took with me some things I didn't. You know, and then I also throw in my own little quirky things to make it, you know, my own. And uh, when I got in the studio to record the record, then the record you're putting in even longer hours than demos. And that's when I knew because we we recorded that that record in two weeks. Bam! Wow. Like we loaded into uh, Henson Studios two weeks later to the day we were loading out. Wow. Loading out. So it was Josh Wilbur. You know, he's a producer. We and Gary just kind of orchestrated this whole thing. And it was just with his engineers, it's boom, boom, boom. We were just a machine in there. And I was putting in time daily for singing. And I was singing um from basic tracks on, just just singing, just because Gary and Josh wanted my voice to sound like I'd been on tour for months. Oh yeah. They, Some they grind. Said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so it was there, the grit was there. And then it was, I was after we did the song Residue, um, that was the one I kind of carry. I think he had to deal with something. He went out to lunch or picked, had to deal with some paperwork somewhere. And he came back in and I did the first verse and chorus, I believe. And Josh played it for him. And that's when Carrie heard it. And he was like, who the hell told him to sing in that register? Yeah. He's like, I'm not saying it's bad. I just like, I've never heard him do that. He goes, and then he came in the control room. He's like, Hey man, it sounds sick, but. That's that's when he kept saying, I think he asked me like three or four different times during the recording of that song. Are you sure you could do this nightly? Are you sure? I was like, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. And he goes, it, it's brutal. I go by the I go say the truth. There's a lot of clean singing in Death Angel. Yeah. But by the end of our touring cycle, my voice is fucking grit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, and and I'm saving the clean bits, but it's so I just go, it's going to be a natural progression. I'll I'll get there. And um. Since that uh, that time, though, I have been definitely working on it and working on it and figuring a way to pace it because it's it's uh, it's, it's going to be a trip because the headlining shows, you know, it's when we do headliners, there's you know, that's a good hour and 20 minutes, hour and a half of, of just going and just going. And there's no you know, there's no background vocals for anyone to come, you know, make it pretty for me. Like I, the only vocal mic on stage is that center vocal mic with this band, Damn. you know, yeah. so. I'm ready. I'm ready. But I've, I've got, you know, all my little contraptions and concoctions I ever had, I'm, you know, double dosing on that for this, for this upcoming, you know, all these upcoming runs for sure. But I'm ready. I'm ready. Are you going in here monitors? Yeah. Yeah. I am going in here. Um, funny. You should ask that too. Cause with death angel, that's in, in all honesty, once you can hear yourself, one thing you become a better singer. Absolutely. Once you can hear yourself, you stop thrashing your fucking throat and coming from the eighties of rehearsing in the damn small little closet rooms. Oh, Marshall and trying Stacks. To hear, oh, dude. dude, all at you in a circle. And you have these little wedges and you're trying to hear yourself. 
Then you go on tour. You don't have your own monitor guy. You're trying to hear yourself through these wedges. And it's just, you, you know, you're, you're killing yourself out there. And especially when you're on a van tour, you're getting no sleep. And even when Death Angel reformed, I was always against in-ear monitors. And I think it was not till like 2013, the dream calls for blood is when I finally started using them. And immediately I was like, wow, this is just, my life just got infinitely easier. Yes. Infinitely. And, and, but the thing that is odd with Death Angel, I kept kind of figuring out what I, what it is I had to do to make it really work because we don't have a designated monitor guy. We have our front of house guy, Tilo, who will we use forever. And I always know out front it's going to sound good. But, you know, you're using the house monitor guy every night. It's, yeah. you know, it's a crap shoot. And they don't, a lot of them, you know, they, they're just there to do their job and they want to get, you know, get the hell back home. And so what I did in Death Angel was to do that, to make it easier on myself and the monitor guy, I, I just use one ear. I keep the, the left ear in and I keep the right ear exposed. And I just say, only thing I need in my ear is vocals with some verb. You know, Vocals just so I could hear. Gotcha. Yeah, for one ear, so then I could hear what's going on on stage. So I'm not going to tell him, "Hey, give me a, you know, give me a great studio mix in my ears," because he doesn't, he doesn't know, yeah. he doesn't know her shit, and he does, he, he doesn't care. So that's what I did, and for Death Angel, I've been doing that since 2013, still to this day, one ear, and then I could hear everything going on stage. But with this, I knew with the intensity I'm singing. I was like, I, I can't pull, you know, this is crazy. And pl and the great thing, don't get me wrong, but with this, we have a designated monitor guy. Yes. So I was like, this is the time. And, you know, with our production rehearsals and whatnot, I, I got some new, I got some new uh, Jerry Harvey audio ones, uh, the, the Sheena's, you know, fitted, boom, got them in. And for all the rehearsals and the shows we've done so far, both ears are in. Our monitor guy knows what I like. I'm getting full, you know, a full mix in my phone, in my, in my ears. And it's just, that's, that's, that's the secret weapon right there. That, that immensely saves this. It and does. People who, people who don't use them don't Crazy. realize it. Crazy. Oh man. It's just, it, it saves you. And it's literally when I started using them, I became a better singer. It's just boom. <clears throat> You know, it's it's they're, they're miraculous. And I, you know, it's going to save my voice and it's going to make it easier to sing with this intensity level for all this touring I have coming up with, you know, with Carrie for sure. Yeah, man. When I'm in the studio and got headphones on, man, I sing like a motherfucker. Right. You exactly. know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, holy shit. I mean, uh, last year I did Rip Raff uh, just for a promo for the Bon Scott tribute. I yeah. went in the studio, one take. And the guy was like, it ain't getting better than that. But it, but then you go to the live rehearsal and you're like, I can't even fucking hear myself. I need to get the nuances and the character of the vocal, but I'm trying to scream over Marshall Stacks and guys that are excited. They're on 10 and it, it, it fucks you, man. So yeah, it, it, does. it does. It does. So I'm one who's, you know, one who was against them for years. And now I swear by it, yeah. swear by it. Yep. It's funny yeah. you were talking about uh, opening for uh, Slayer. I remember those Stone shows back in the day. I saw them three times at the Stone. And Slayer, I, I mean, I, you know, you and I would be, we're metalheads and we go to the yeah. Stone every night and, and whatever. But they were actually fucking scary. <laughs> like, like they I were. remember, dude, Tom came out, he had that fucking Grim Reaper tattoo. And they opened with South of Heaven on that tour. And I yeah, remember yeah. I was sitting there and I was like, oh, man, this is that and Merciful Fate, the gig you guys played at the uh, Kabuki. I yeah. mean, Merciful Fate and Slayer to me were like, oh, these guys are fucking crazy. This is some <laughs> dark shit. Isn't that really? wild? When you're a kid, you're walking home from the, to the bus stop on fucking Geary and you're looking around like, is that the devil? Yeah, totally. <laughs> Dude, it's totally. crazy. Yep. I remember listening to but man, like first time I heard uh, you know, Merciful Fate, and I and I finally bought the record. You know, I, it was either from the record vault or the record exchange. Right. And I got home, you know, I listened to it and it's scary. And I put I remember even the cover at first, I was like, I'm gonna put that one behind where my other albums are. I just don't want to. I don't know if I'm gonna sleep well looking at that cover. I know. Yeah, that <laughs> nuns have it. no fun. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh what? yeah. Yeah, yeah. But you know, you know, those were the days, and Slayer were were scary, and you know, and their crowd was amazing. 
you know, oh, just my violent. God. I love it. I love it to the fullest, man. It's just yeah. pure adrenaline and volume and crushing tunes, man. Especially yeah. the seasons era. It's just like, get the fuck out of here, man. <laughs> this is insane. Now yeah, yeah. you do the demos, you do yeah. the record. At what point do you sit down with Rob? Because Rob's your your man for a hundred years. And you finally have to tell them, how does this go down? Oh, man. I mean, with this one, it's tough. You know, I had to, I really had to respect the, you know, again, the NDA stuff. I really did. And it's just, it would be eating at me. Because, you know, Death Angel has been touring consistently. We con toured consistently when the world shut down. When the world reopened, we went right back out on the road. You know, and this was all happening I was starting to do these demos during the pandemic, you know, and then the, and then after that, I was regularly, you know, seeing Carrie to do more demos when the world opened. And there would be points where the record was done. You know, the record was done for a year before it came out. Wow. And I'd be on tour with Death Angel. And, you know, there's some nights where me and Robert are front, in the, you know, the, the lounge, just me and him, and we're, you know, drinking and listening to music and, you know, just just laughing and talking like we do. And it just took everything in me. You know, I, it's so hard to not just say, look, bro. Look, bro. So this is one of those things that just uh, like it or not, it, it, it you know, some people think I'm an ass about it, but I just kind of really promised. I promised, you know, I promised Carrie and I signed the, you know, the NDA. I promised everyone I wasn't going to let anyone know, you know, uh, the only pr people who knew were my 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 girlfriend, my girl, my my um, my mom and my sister. We didn't even tell my dad because my dad has loose lips <laughs> so we didn't tell him man so that was that was those are the three people who knew you know and all i did was uh and, and of course you know people who were at the studio and were recording shit like that who are all nda people as well so i just uh uh it's fucked up but i waited and um i i let him know through email same day that the announcement happened oh like, shit yeah 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 let him know through email and, was that um, because it was going to be really tough? It was. It was. And then, you know, then after, shortly thereafter, I talked to Rob and Ted. You yeah. know, I, I did. Um, but, you know, because I even said in the email, like, look, this is the, the toughest thing for me to tell you. And I, how I worded it in one aspect to, to them to, um, was just pretty much, this is going to be either the most surprising thing in the world to you or slash the most obvious thing in the world to you. You know what I mean? And um, I even said at the end, because it was an email to all the guys, and I just said, you know, take some time to really process all this before you respond, before we talk. Let's all let this kind of sink in, and then we, you know, come together. If you want to talk to me, then then we'll all talk, you know? And shortly thereafter, though, I, I, I talked to Ted and Rob, and um, they were still a little sideswiped for sure. For sure. You know, I could see it in there. We did a, a a FaceTime kind of Zoom call, the three of us. And they were both definitely still in kind of a state of processing it, you know. But they were, you know, by the end of the call, after we talked for about an hour, they were, you know, they were supportive for sure. You know, happy for me. And they both did say, now that you mention it, man, it is kind of the most obvious fucking thing in the world. <laughs> you know. So, but it was, it was tough, man. It, I'm not going to lie. It's tough, you know, cause we've been through so much together, oh, so God. much together, especially me and Rob. I mean, not to take away from shit. Ted's been in the band since 2001 and, you know, now Damien and Will have been in the band for well over a decade now, you know? So it's just, it's crazy. But of course me and Rob, we've known each other since we were, you know, in the crib. Yeah. So that it was a tough one, but now, you know, very, very supportive. Before the first show, I got a text from him saying to have a fucking killer show, bro. And all the stuff, the release day, congratulations. He sent me congratulations on release day, Ted as well. So, you know, they've grown to accept it. And I think, you know, it's 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 already brought a lot of attention to Death Angel. And it's and it's gonna keep doing that. So uh it's it's but it was tough. I'm sorry, I'm gonna keep going to do different tangents, you know. Oh no, I know because I fucking know, you know, it's a band is uh especially somebody like Rob, 
yeah. everything you've been through together, you know, swarm, the van crash, the the you left the band, got married, yeah. moved to Italy, come back, start singing again, and and then the ups and downs of Death Angel and the years of thrash when people weren't paying attention, and then it comes back bigger than ever now with the great, great uh, old school bands and and it's uh and also rob it would be a tough question for him let's say carrie asked him to play instead of phil and and there was a different singer it, it's a really really hard thing to do because you love you know your guys it's not yeah. just like ah fuck it i was just doing this because there's nothing else going on and like you said it does shine a giant light on death angel and uh, I've been a fan of Death Angel since day one. So yeah, yeah. I was like, well, this is great because when Carrie's not going to be touring all the time. So when he's not, Death Angel can go out and it really gives uh, another bla another fucking blast to Death Angel. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So it's, uh, you know, I'm excited about everything. I'm excited about everything ahead. But yeah, for sure. It was definitely a. Uh... A, a delicate situation and yeah. I, I was just i kept even before it was happening when i knew it was coming up it's like how i got to choose my words carefully i don't want you know it, it it's it's tough it's tough but now that it's out i feel so relieved okay. so relieved you know what i mean it's, it's out and since then you know uh we've toured south america south and central america together um uh, recently and that was the first tour we did since the announcement and some songs have been released so everyone got along great and uh it's you know it's it's out and it just feels so much better to be around the guys with them knowing yeah i just now, felt so odd them not it, knowing yet in the email do you preference right away look i'm still in death angel like right yeah. away yeah cool. absolutely yeah 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 i mean you know first well at first i'm kind of you know yammering about the process of it but i'm definitely said you know i'm very much still the singer of death angel you know and of course when i was talking to rob and ted and they were like yes and rob was like i was very happy to hear you say that I'm like of yeah. course bro <laughs> <laughs> you know? i love rob man i think yeah. he's fucking i think he's fantastic yeah and, uh, i got a I soft spot for that guy as well <laughs> i love death angel man um and we I love mean, you I think the ultraviolence is uh, to me, it's it's ride the lightning, ultraviolence, bonded by blood. Those are the records for me that um, and the first testament, you know, that are just yeah, yeah. the fucking holy grail of the Bay Area thrash. You know, those are yeah, the ones, yeah. man. Those are the ones. Uh, I'm, a, I'm definitely a ride the lightning guy myself for sure, and of course oh. bonded. Oh yeah, of course yeah, bonded. Yeah, yeah. 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 Now, here's an interesting thing that um, I find, uh, of course, Metallica being one of my favorite bands of all time mm -hmm. and, and just 100 percent, you know, just I think it's the greatest story in music and everything. But the interesting thing about Metallica and Slayer, they have fans that hate them. It's the most bizarre <laughs> thing I've ever fucking seen. It is the oh, most. Oh man, it's true. It's fucking crazy. You could literally every day, you could you could tweet Saint Anger is fucking great and have three days of responses. <laughs> and you know what I mean? You can tweet Carrie King is fucking killer. Yeah, and, yeah. And it's just going to be unreal. I've never seen, and I think in a fucking evil way, it really helps the band. I remember one time, uh, Mitzi Shore, rest in peace, that owns the comedy store said, yeah, yeah. you need half the people to hate you and half to love you to be giant. And man, it's fucking true. Absolutely. I love that. Yeah. I love that quote. Yeah, it's true. It is it's true. And it's so wild. Yeah. Cause they, they definitely both, both bands have people to just, just loathe them you know oh. and it's so crazy but they're it's at so the crazy. venue that's what makes yeah, it crazy exactly. <laughs> they're at the goddamn thing let me tell you something when i was a kid my mom put broccoli on the table i took a bite and i went fuck no and never <laughs> ate it again i didn't each night eat it and go i fucking hate this you know yeah. it's just <laughs> fucking no 
You know what I mean? It's wild. If I don't like something, I like go. So they love the band, but they just complain, man. It's yeah. crazy. Well, I mean, you know, the world's changed, especially because now, well, because the internet, now everyone has their, you know, yep. their little electronic, you know, soapbox that they can preach from. Yeah. And, and then, you know, they get everyone riled up and everyone's just chiming in from their, you know, the safety of their little, you know, yeah. Ironclad soapbox at home. But, uh, it's 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 so weird and people take you know some of these random people's word for gospel oh yeah and yeah you know yeah nah nah you know, it's... I, I i wish there was a button this is what i do a bit about it where someone's trolling and you could press it and then they're in their living room and you go what what'd you say you know what i mean like, yeah 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 and then they're like oh oh, oh i'm a big fan I'm a big, yeah. oh, 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 you know what i mean because they really do it because they want attention Oh yeah, that's all. That's all it is. That's all. For it sure, is. for sure. <laughs> now, how do you pick the fucking set list, man? I mean, the album. First of all, I want to tell people this album is out right now. Okay, from Hell I Rise, it is fantastic. It's sad. It's if you a buddy of mine hit me yesterday, he goes, "I like this better than the last couple Slayer records," and you know, it is heavy. Uh, crucifixion that fucking jam towards the end around the one minute mark left is just like wow yeah it, yeah. it is molten this thing so how do you pick the set list uh for you does he go i want to do these slayer songs and you go well i can sing these better than this one or what's going on there well you know again that's all on carry that's right. that's kind of one thing you know uh, <laughs> that i kind of like about some of this with death angel you know i'm i'm hands on about everything you know this you know he's definitely shares everything with us and you know he, he runs th stuff by us but i always hate being a part of the set list always yeah it's the hardest thing for any band but he's very methodical about what he wants he is it, like about everything carrie's like very methodical about what he wants and how he does things and uh he puts together the set list you know now now, with these shows we're about to do in Europe, they're going to be the first shows we're doing with the album out. We've done three shows and the record wasn't even out yet. So it's, <laughs> yeah, I'm glad finally people are going to know the goddamn material, except for, you know, the two or three that were released. And um, so he puts it together and the set. I've been practicing the set every day, you know, at least not not full volume, but, you know, just kind of on my walks and just making sure my, my breathing is going to be in the right place and just kind of, you know, make sure the lips are muscle memory with what's going on, but it's uh, mostly the record. And then there's definitely choice cuts of Slayer songs right. that, uh, that, that, you know, that he wrote or is, was, you know, had a heavy hand in writing for sure. And, um, you know, the ones he brought, he's brought my way, you know, I, I, I I'll have to say, you know, the things that, how would I put this? Of course, it's daunting to some degree to, you know, play Slayer stuff because people are, you know, they're going to have their magnifying glass or, you know, their, their ears listening to me. But um, I'm versatile enough of a vocalist that I'm going to do them justice. And I'm not I'm not intimidated by the crowd to do them in front of them. I, I literally am confident enough in my voice that I will do these Slayer songs justice. And already with the live shows we've done, uh, the three we've done, um, We've done some Slayer so songs and um, those I know at least people are grasping on to because the record wasn't out yet. Our record. from <laughs> And right. so it's good. So I saw him, especially, you know, the, the neat thing is, of course, when you do Rain and Blood, people are going to go ape shit. And then the, I think the neat thing that really kind of grabbed people was uh, we made a uh, Black Magic part of the um, set. And, um, you know, Black Magic has those high screams in it. And... Um, I can still do those high screams. Really? So, <laughs> oh yeah. I'm hitting those black magic screams. And after I'd hit the black magic screams, I'd look at the crowd. You could see the crowd like, yeah. <laughs> like look at each yeah. other, hitting the guy next to him. I'm like, okay, I got you guys. So I think it's just, uh, Gary put together quite a set, quite a set. And I think he already knows, you know, cause this tour we're doing upcoming, uh, starts got June 3rd in Tilburg in the Netherlands. And, um, it goes for, I think, four and a half weeks, a lot, mostly summer festivals, but in between, definitely, you know, headlining gigs at some venues. And it's going to be it's it's the set list he has for the headliners are awesome. And the set list he has for the festivals, which are usually 50, 50 minutes an hour or, you know, even more just. Yeah. 
concentrated, but just vicious. But there'll always be a, a few Slayer songs in there for sure. For sure. Um, I I did see today. I'm glad I interviewed you today and not uh, yesterday. But uh, Death Angel Wasp tour. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Holy shit, man! I mean, you know, playing I, their first record in its entirety. I love that first Wasp record. Oh man, you know, fuck like a beast. Uh, yeah. You know, Blackie's voice. I heard it a couple of days ago. Uh, a song came on the Boneyard Sirius XM, and man, his voice is so fucking cutting and radical. You know. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think Blackie's voice is sick. And, oh, and, and from the get go, it was. He's got a great voice, a, such a great voice for rock. And so it just, unique. It, it, and it sounds like rebellion. Oh, my it God. sounds like rebellion. But yeah, for sure. So this tour will be interesting. Yeah, it got it just got announced today. So yeah, yeah. Wasp, Death Angel. Wasp was doing their. Uh, yeah, first record in its entirety. And um North America, what I think it starts October 29th and runs through December 12th or 14th, something of that nature. Yeah. What a yeah. great tour, man. What a great tour. I mean, yeah, he toured be- last year and he was selling out theaters. We'll turn here in LA and, and people are going crazy, you know? Yeah, it would be great. So I, I, I'm excited about it for sure. That's and um, great. I know Will's a huge Wasp fan too. So, It'll be cool. And then I get to say, you know, we played with him at festivals before, but this is the first time that we'll play with him in a venue, except for Death Angel played with Wasp at the Stone. But before I sang, oh, but I was there. I was yeah. there, roadie. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so it was Wasp, Death Angel. And, and I, I, I don't even think the Fuck Like a Beast EP was out even. Right. So it was literally their demo. And, you know, they still had their, like, you know, silk screened wasp shirts and stuff. And yeah, I remember that. And I just, it was, it was crazy. Cause I think there was somewhere out there, there's a photo of Andy. So this is before I joined death angel and I joined death angel at 15. So if I was, this is probably, it had to be when I was 14. So Andy was 11. Wow. When they played with wasp at the stone and there's a photo out there of them, you know, the backstage door where the stone was coming out. A photo of Andy stand between fucking Blackie and Chris Holmes. Plus, they're in their boots. And Andy, at that point, was an 11-year-old, you know, kid. Yeah. 11-year-old Filipino kid, so he was short. And Blackie and Chris, you know, are tall as hell. Plus, they're in their fucking extreme boots. So, I've yeah. I, I seen the photo before. I mean, I haven't seen it in years, but it was hilarious. So, at least now it's my time to make up that I wasn't in Death Angel yet. And we get to play with Wasp, so. And it's for that first record. So, it... I'm interested to see how some of the Wasp fans will take in Death Angel. I know a lot of people have seen the logo and whatnot, so I think it's gonna the two bands for them doing the first record and our style of music. I think it's gonna be a good marriage, so to speak. You know, I think it's gonna be fantastic. I mean, because yeah. Wasp, you know, later Blind in Texas, whatever MTV era, you know, it's like mm-hmm. rock and roll. But early Wasp was fucking radical. It was dark. They took Kiss and went to another fucking level. Blackie yeah. played bass back then, which I loved way more than him on guitar. They had fucking, um, it, you know, uh, Steve Riley on drums. Who oh, was yeah. Fucking, yeah, killing. And then Chris Holmes was a goddamn fucking lunatic, man. Maniac. Yeah, and then Piper on the other guitar with those yep, weird Piper, fucking... exactly. Those weird road warrior fucking smokestacks <laughs> coming out of his goddamn shoulder. You were just like, this is on, man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I yeah. Love it. It's true, man. And his, you know, they had a great, they just great energy in his voice. Again, I just, I, I think his voice is fantastic. Yeah. It's fantastic. You know, their their cover of the Real Me or you know the Who. Oh yeah. Oh man, like his voice was it was perfect for his voice. Oh. You know, just like yeah, it's just it's just awesome. Yeah. He's great, man. How great was the Stone? It's I think it's so underrated. You know, people talk the whiskey, they talk CBGBs, the yeah. Stone is really the ground zero of so much fucking insane music, especially the metal world, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. It, you know, it, it literally, it's part of my DNA. You know, it helped me become who I was. Like, just everything. Yeah. Friends, family, music, competition, you know, to a certain degree. Friendly competition within the Bay Area. Just 
and just all the shows you saw who came through there. Not to mention, you know, all of us, you know, Bay Area bands that played there, but just the amount of talent that came through in international bands. You say, shit, I saw them at the Stone. You know, and yeah. these people are playing, you know, sheds and arenas now. Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah, man. I mean, on their farewell tours, for Christ's sake. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I do I do a bit where I, I'm saying like stop falling for the farewell tour. It's fucking they could all be dead and they're still touring. Leonard Skinner, perfect example. Do you oh, know? Yeah. I saw yeah, the yeah. Who in 1982 on their farewell tour. I saw the Who two years ago. All right, yeah. like <laughs> it's like they they need a new angle to get butts in the seats. You know, yeah. it's like yeah, come yeah. on. <laughs> Are you now? I did want to ask you this because hmm. you you came in to see Bill Burr and hung out with me and uh, oh yeah, Troubadour. Are you a big comedy guy? Absolutely, man. I've loved comedy my entire life, entire life. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah from yeah. you know comedy comedy records on vinyl, everything. Me and my sister were just talking about that uh, two nights ago or something. How we had all the you know the early Steve Martin records memorized. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. memorized. You know, Cheech and like Chong. That. Cheech and oh. Chong. Yep, oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, Prior. Richard Pryor. Oh and then, yeah. And then we were in the Bay Area when like Bobcat exploded. You know, for sure. That for was sure. fucking wild. Yeah, Cobbs and the Comedy Cellar and stuff. I used to always, you know, I used to even go to. There used to be a comedy club in Walnut Creek. Walnut Creek. Yeah, yep. that was that was a punchline out there. They, there you go. You used to go to the punchline Walnut Creek all the time when I was living in Concord. Yeah. Yeah. Me and yeah. my friend, me and my friend Eric, we'd go like every Wednesday. We'd be like, let's do let's do comedy night or something, you know? Yeah. So I saw a bunch of people. Bunch of people, you know. Where are you living now? You in the Bay Area still? Yeah, I split my time. I'm I'm when I'm here, I'm at Point Richmond area. Oh yeah. Yeah. So my family's all here. My family's all here. My sister's like a mile away. I'm here with my parents right now. Um, you know, they're Kind of, we both kind of watch over them. They're hitting that age, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're there, and then, but I split my time between here and Florida. My girl lives in Florida. Wow. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So I spend a lot of time there. A lot, but when I'm not on tour, I split my time between Florida and here. And um, yeah, yeah. So I'm I'm always kind of you know air plant living on the go. But yeah. <laughs> and then where do you guys rehearse in New York area? Because Carrie moved out there after Vegas, right? Yeah, Carrie, Carrie lives in New York now, but we still rehearse down in um, Southern California when we okay. rehearse. Yeah. yeah, so he has a place down there that we, we go, and it's where we did, we did the demo. So, yeah, we did, uh, before the first show, we did, I think, um, well, they rehearsed two days. I was in, on tour in, you know, for three and a half weeks with Death Angel in yeah. Latin America. And, you know, touring South America is brutal because you're just flying and flying and flying, you know? So three and a half weeks, it was a long time with a lot of flights. And the guys, uh, you know, with with Carrie, they already started rehearsing two days. And I came for the there was four four rehearsals in Southern California and they did two. Uh, I think it was um, I'm so bad with dates, though. Uh, whether it's let's just say the 27th and 28th, whatever the hell. And I came in on the oh, no. So it's the 28th, 29th. Ah. Because I landed on the 30th. So I flew. The last show for Death Angel was in Sao Paulo, Brazil, Summer Breeze the Festival. We played there on the 28th. The 29th, I flew from Sao Paulo to straight to Houston, which was like 10 and a half hours. Oh. I had like a four-hour layover in Houston. Flew from Houston to Southern California, which was another, you know, three hours on top of that. Got to the, got to the hotel, took an hour-long nap. Took a shower, went straight to rehearsal. Oh, yeah, oh. man, it was brutal. Oh, it was, and I was just, I was messing up left and right. I was it's everything. I was like, I'm sorry, guys. I'm like, I, I'm like part oatmeal. I'm going for it, but I was spun. So Are yeah, you we using rehearsed. a teleprompter? No, 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 no. I don't want to. I don't like them because they're really distracting for me. Yeah, because e to me, even if you know the song, your eyes are going to keep glancing there. Even right. Like if you know, it's like. And I'm one of them. I'm in general. I get distracted. I'm like I say, like I'm I'm a fish, dude. I swim to shiny objects. It's like what, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And so you put something shiny like that. I'm my eyes are gonna go to it, and then I'm like getting distracted because you're like, you know this fucking song. Why are you looking at that thing? Yeah. So and then it also takes away from the fact that I like to work a stage. I like right. going stage right. I like going stage left. I like you know, and I don't want to 
I don't want, uh, a, you know, a security blanket for me. I want to yeah. just go out there and just here I am balls out, you know? So, and I know a lot of people need it or it, it, it maybe they want that for just that backup, but of course I'd rather go up there and be rock and roll and fuck up a, fuck up a verse and go, ah, there you go. Fuck that one up. That's I'm gonna listen to that one on my walk tomorrow. I'll make sure I don't fuck it up again, you know? But uh, it, it's just, it's how it is. But those rehearsals anyway went fucking awesome. So we did two rehearsals there. Then I came back up to Northern California for a day and a half, flew to Chicago. We then rehearsed two days in Chicago for that club show, we, we, in that club. And then we played that next day and then took a day off, then flew to Florida, and then we played the festival. You know, it's just kind of shit. From, from South America, I was just on, 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 on. It was... Fuck. finally my voice feels rested because i've had the last you know the last show we played was um sonic temple the festival in columbus ohio and i think that was about a week and a half ago so i finally have just been like resting it from south america for christ's sake <laughs> yeah wow yeah man i i hear you man the airplanes are fucking wiping uh, I, i'm always at them and i'm like mm. Uh, give Phil my love. Congrats to Phil. Another Bay Area old school soldier of thrash from violence is in the band. And, yeah, I love uh, Phil. Yeah, you gotta love him. And he did that fill in for Slayer uh, when Gary Holt couldn't be there. Like instantly, that's fucking crazy. Yeah. And, um, and it's great to see him up there. He's had a resurgence over the last four or five years from that. And uh, and and congrats on this and all your success and and congrats to Kerry King, man. He's out. there. Oh, and, dude, yeah. it's great. I love the guys in the band. You know, I've known, say, Paul Bostaff. I've known since what? I was 15. I've known 15, 16. I've known Phil since I was 15, 16. You know, technical guy. I met Kerry when I was right. 16. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, and Kyle, I um. You know, I didn't meet Kyle till later, but, you know, I've known Kyle now for a good, I don't even know, seven years. Everyone in that band, great, spot on players, spot on guys, more Fuck importantly. Yeah. Carrie. Have, have you ever seen Carrie laugh? Oh, yeah, man. I make <laughs> Carrie laugh. Come on. I'm a, I'm a madman. I make Carrie laugh. I make Carrie laugh all the time. I've never sure. seen him laugh. Yeah, talk, yeah. He, whenever he's got a hell of a sense of humor too. But yeah. he's not a, he's not a big knee slapper. He doesn't laugh long, but he, right. he'll laugh and then he's one of those back. guys that laughs on the inside. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He he Gary's great. All the guys are great, you know. No. So it's 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 really nice. And a lot of the crew, I know a lot of the crew, some of the crew actually used to work for Death Angel. So it's nice that I even there's a sense of familiarity, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm really excited about this upcoming European tour. As I said, you know, the record's out. Now people will know it. And um, yeah, on Raining Phoenix Music. So just so you know, from Hell I Rise. And then, yeah, Death Angel's going on tour with Wasp. And we're currently writing the new Death Angel record, you know. So it's just, I'm going to be a busy boy. Oh my I like God. being busy. I yeah. do too, man. When, I, when I'm when i idle. I know you do. Ooh, God damn. When you I'm got idle. a work ethic on you. And I respect that. I love that. I got 151 shows this year so far. You're I, savage. Dude, I just did the Hollywood Bowl at 58 years old, man. I'm fucking, that is I, awesome. And the garden. I'm tooting my horn. Fuck you guys. <laughs> you should, man. I'm proud of you. Me and Dean know each other a long time. So. Oh, my God, dude. I For real, that. man. For real, that. dude. From yeah. metal to fucking fashion, wasteland, hate street fucking yeah. heroes just out here just eating Chabrello burritos and... <laughs> And starving and, and yep. living, man. I love yeah. you, dude. Thanks for love doing you right the back. show. And hey, congrats thanks for making again. it happen. Hey, I really, really appreciate it, man. I really, really appreciate it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah man. And I look forward to next time we can hang. Hopefully, our paths will cross somewhere on the road and we'll, you know, it'll we'll happen. do it. It'll happen. And I, won't, and I won't feel like I'm lying to you, you know, or hiding some big secret. <laughs> It's so great, man. I, I totally. got that. I still got that text. Hold on. I think I got it right here. It's fucking, <laughs> it's so great because it's so real, you know, it's just yeah. like, uh, 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 hold on. Uh, yeah. Okay. Here it is. Um, so now in reflection, you could probably look back and wonder why I was acting so weird when I ran into Hollywood. <laughs> and you so graciously got me into the Troubadour show. 
I was recording the Carrie King record at Henson and it was top secret. And I told the Death Angel guys that I was in Florida with my girl. So when I saw you, I said I was doing press. Holy shit. I felt so awkward. Like I was walking in on fucking someone's chick. And I split <laughs> immediately after the track. I tracked vocals and they all knew I was at your show. Fucking crazy, brother. Just wanted to let you know why I was acting weird. Love you. <laughs> I said... I said, ah, so funny. I put it all together recently. You sound fantastic on the record. Congrats. But it was just, uh, I love, I love, I love life when that happens. When you cross sure, with man. somebody, man, it's just like, wow. You know, yeah. Forrest Gump action. <laughs> totally, totally, totally. All right, all right buddy. Uh, have a hey. great tour. And um, I'll see you out there for sure. I'll come see the Carrie King band and uh, see you with Wasp. I know you're not doing the LA show with Wasp, unfortunately, yeah. but I'll see you somewhere. Absolutely, brother. Love you, Dean. Thank you so I, much, my man. I, I love you. See you, man.